Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. We are so excited for this one. This has been a topic that has been heavily requested because I think a few months ago we had a webinar where we kind of touched on this a little bit. I think we had like one slide about this in the presentation and there were so many questions about it. So we were thought to ourselves, you know what, we need to just make this a full on webinar. So we're very, very excited. And we also have a special guest with us today as well. Emma is here with us. So very excited for this one. And as we go through intros and some housekeeping, let us know in the chat where you're joining from and we'll get started. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. So this is your first webinar with us. We'll do a couple of intros. So my name is Alyssa and I'm a community manager here at Hey Orca. So I work on our webinars, our Facebook group, our newsletter, all those sorts of things. And I'll pass it over to Ketsia. Hi, everyone. You know, I just noticed that you are maybe our first Canadian guest. I mean, at least for me. So we're keeping it within Canada. So everyone who is from Canada, please let us know. But hi, I'm Ketsia. I'm the social media community manager here at Hey Orca. And I guess this is the first time you guys are seeing my face like for real <laughs> because I just got studio lights. So I'm not backlit anymore. Um, cheers to that. But yeah, I do everything uh, from social media and stuff like that here at Hey Orca in partnerships. So I'm really, really excited um, for this webinar. And I'm going to pass it over to Emma. I'm a big fan of her. So. <laughs> Well, hey guys, my name is Emma Makasham. I am the uh, head of marketing at MMI, and I've also been building my personal brand on LinkedIn for almost a year now. And we've just hit 12,000 followers, which is really exciting. A uh, big fan of Hey Orca, so really honored um, that I was asked to speak today on this topic. And yeah, thank you for having me. So it's an honor to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Emma. Yes, we've been following you for a while and absolutely love your content on LinkedIn. So if you don't follow Emma, Jessie, uh, just put her LinkedIn in the chat there. So definitely follow her. So many amazing posts. All right. So before we get into all of the amazing information Emma is going to take us through, we do have a giveaway. So as usual, we love to do a giveaway in every single webinar that we run. So in the giveaway today, you have two ways to win points to our merch store. So the very first way is to head to our Instagram and we have this question on our stories right now. So head to our story. Jesse actually just put our um, Instagram in the chat there. So head to our Instagram story, vote on the poll, and we will be randomly selecting somebody who voted at the end to win some merch store points. And the second way to win is actually for our Hey Orca customers here with us today. So all of the Hey Orca customers here, let me know what feature in Hey Orca could you not live without? So if it was just taken away one day, your whole day would be completely ruined. Let me know in the chat. Not a ruined day. <laughs> yes. Which which feature would just, if that was gone, it would just ruin your day. I can think of mine. Mine would be copy post. I feel like that is an incredible feature. Yeah, I agree. 100%. I feel, should I tell mine? I don't know. I feel like I would. Yeah. I think reporting, <laughs> I think reporting would, would be because reporting takes so much time. And now I haven't done like, a, like a super long report since I started using Hey Orca. So if I had to go back to that, I don't know. That would ruin my day. <laughs> yeah, totally. I see another copy post fan in the chat. Um, approvals, yes. AI alt text, yes, absolutely. Awesome. So keep letting us know your answers in the chat and we will be randomly selecting one of you at the very end to win some merch points. Now, before I head it, or before I um, let Emma take over and take us through all the amazing things that she has, I do want to show you one of our most recent features. So I think I showed it last week. It just came out last week. It is TikTok reports within Heyorka. So I am going to show you really quick what that looks like. So if you are a TikToker, 
or your brand loves TikTok, you're going to absolutely love this. So to find it, you just head over to our reports over here on the side and head to TikTok profiles. So you can change the date range. So we'll just say for the month of March. Also can't believe March is like pretty much done. That went by way too fast. Um, so if you wanted to do your monthly reports, I guess this is the perfect time to be showing this. You can go here, do the date range, and then through this, you can see your follower growth, engagement, post views, profile views, um, and your most popular TikToks as well. So definitely check that out if you are a TikTok user and you have Heyorka. So one of my favorite features that we have released recently. Let me know in the chat if you're a big TikToker or if your brand is. Awesome. So I will reshare the presentation here. And I'm now going to pass it over to Emma. So here we go. Perfect. Thank you. So thank you so much again for having me on. And today we're going to be talking about something called Ideal Client Profiles or ICP for short. And this might sound kind of complicated or overwhelming, especially if you've never heard it before, but this is a really great way to streamline your marketing and make it effective every single time you create marketing material. So by the end of today, because I know you guys are busy people and I want to make sure that the webinar is beneficial and educational for you so you can walk away and feel like you learned something that you can utilize in your business moving forward. So by the end of today, you're going to understand exactly what an ICP is, why it's a game changer for marketing, and how you can make one for your business, which is going to be great and very helpful. So you might be asking yourself, what is an ICP? What are What is she talking about? And I want you to think of an ICP as essentially a blueprint for your dream client. So the kind of client who would love your product, love your service, and really benefit the most from it, right? So why should we even care about this ICP thing? It's a blueprint, great, but why should you actually care about it and put in the work to make one? So to help you understand why it's important, I want you to imagine that you are throwing darts in a dark room, okay? And you're trying to aim for the board. And when you don't have an ICP, this is what marketing feels like because you're just trying to throw anything and everything at the wall, hoping that you're going to hit something. Um, so when you don't know who you're aiming at and who you're targeting at, it feels like throwing darts in a dark room. And an ICP, essentially what it does is it turns on the lights in that room. So you're not wasting time, you're not wasting money, and you're actually reaching out to people and connecting people um, who will be interested in purchasing what you're selling or working with you as a client, right? So it really helps us focus on people who are right for our products and making the marketing simple, making it smarter, more personal, and more effective. And if you are running your own agency or running your own business, you know how important that is. Um, but even if you work in-house for a brand, if you have a boss, you know, you want to make sure that you're producing marketing material that is effective and actually going to accomplish what you want it to accomplish, right? So next, we're going to talk about finding your ICP. So you know you need one, you know it's beneficial, but how do you actually find one and create one for yourself? So I want you to imagine that you're putting on a little detective hat. I'm putting one on as well. And we're going to figure out this ICP puzzle together. And I've created a simple step-by-step -step guide to help you do this. So after the webinar, if you feel inspired, you know exactly what you need to do um, in order to make one for yourself. So the first thing I want you to do is look at your current customers. Um, who loves what you do already? Who keeps coming back again and again? And I want you to start there because these people are gold mines of information for you because they already exist in your business ecosystem. The second thing I want you to do is find the common thread between all of these people. So really look for patterns. Um, are the people who are purchasing from you the most frequently all in the same industry? Um, do they come from a specific company, sp uh, company size? You know, what problems do these people have that your products or your services solve for them? 
And I want you to write it down, list it out, write down everything that these ideal customers have in common for you, right? So it could be things like where they're located, again, how big the company is that they're coming from, um, what challenges they face, you name it, write it down. And don't get stressed about this part, right? If you find a similarity, you can write it down. It's not serious. You don't have to show this to anyone yet. Um, and then you can edit it later. So any similarities, you write them down. And this is really your ICP starting point. So it's a sketch of types of customers who get the most out of what you offer. And point number four is uh, the details really matter. So your ICP details matter. So I want to dive deep into what you're actually going to include in your ICP. Um, and these are some things that you really want to get to know about your ideal client profile. So the first one is the industry that they're from, um, but also where do they hang out online, on or offline, um, depending on your business, depending on the clients you work with, you might be focusing more offline um, or online. So it really depends on you and your specific niche that you're in. Um, also think about the company size and the revenue. So are we talking small startups? Are we talking big enterprises? Um, who are you really targeting? And the revenue part is important because especially if you're a freelancer and you're putting together services or offers, you want to think about price, right? And what is an appropriate amount? Um, and you can get information into this based on the revenue and the people that you're targeting, right? Also, location. Um, so are you targeting local businesses? Are you targeting global businesses? Again, this is important information that you want to take into account because it's gonna your marketing is going to change depending on who you're targeting. Um, and last but not least, the challenges, right? So what keeps these people up at night? What really stresses them out? What are they struggling with? Um, and how can your product or your service help them get a better night's sleep? How, how can that help them be better in life, right? So nailing down these details will really help you see um, who your marketing should talk to. And it's going to give you a roadmap and a blueprint in order to do that. Um, I just want to say, okay. I love this breakdown. <laughs> yes. I feel like I feel like when people are trying to figure out who their ICPs are, it might feel super overwhelming like where do I start how do I even go about this so having that breakdown really helps yeah and I was I was going to ask a question actually because I feel like you know freelancer to freelancer I feel like you know there there might be some freelancers here as well but when do you think people should ideally have an ICP let's say like I feel like sometimes as a freelancer you're starting out you don't really know like who you're targeting in the beginning you're kind of like doing the whole like dark room in the dark thing and then you know you might like end up being like oh actually the client base I have right now I don't like it would you recommend like that it's a thing that needs to constantly be updated or should it only be done in the beginning what do you think yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So for me, I am a big planner. So I always recommend to people, the earlier you can have an ICP in place, the better. And I think even if you're a freelancer, and you're just starting out, and you know, you're not too sure who your existing clients are going to be, um, try and create one for people that you want to work with. So it doesn't have to be that you've already worked with these people before, but you know, okay, I really want to work with like local floral shops in my area. Um, and create create your ICP based on that. So the sooner the better. And to touch on the point about, um, you know, just do you have it just in the beginning? Or is this something you do all the time? So your ICP is a living document, I like to say. So it really is important that you go back and look at it. Um, look at your analytics, look at who you're actually talking to and working with, especially if you're just starting out, look back maybe in six months, um, because your clients change, your business changes, and you really want to keep that relevant and up to date so that, yeah, you're targeting the right people um, as you continue to grow as a business owner. So. Okay, no, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I feel like that's such a helpful um, answer. And also, um, I hope it helps people. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So um, if you are trying to find this information, right? Like like we said, it can be really overwhelming and all the 
this can sound great, but you have no idea where to actually get this information to build your ICP. So this is what I'm here to help you do today. So we're going to talk about um, where you can start digging into so that you can actually find this information. The first one is customer surveys and interviews. So straight from the horse's mouth, I like to say, um, ask your customers, ask your clients why they chose you, what they love about you. Um, and maybe what could be better, right? You can do this in a couple of different ways, again, depending on your business, depending on where you are um, in your journey as a business owner or freelancer. Um, you can set up emails to send out to clients and get surveys that way, or you could call them, right? You could have a conversation depending again on your relationship with your clients and your customers and ask them those questions because that is so valuable um, moving forward. The next one um, may not apply if you're a freelancer, but it definitely applies if you are in-house for a brand or you work in an agency. Um, talk to your sales team. So talk to other people in other departments because these um, people are talking to your customers and your clients every single day. They know um, what their objections are. They know what they're struggling with. So don't be afraid to cross departments because you never know when those golden nuggets of information are going to appear and actually help you build your marketing efforts. Um, so yeah, don't don't ignore the sales team. They're very important. Um, so next is social media listening. Get on social media. Pay attention to what your customers and clients are talking about, what's important to them. Um, this is really great information to help build out your ICP. And Google Analytics, right? We love a bit of data. I know data can be scary, but it is very useful. Um, so check out who is visiting your website. What pages are they lingering on? Um, where are they bouncing off of your website if you have one? Um, and this is really gold for understanding your their interests and their behaviors and getting a little peek into how they're interacting with your brand overall. So Gathering this um, data is like collecting a bunch of puzzle pieces, I like to say. And the more pieces that you have, the clearer the picture of your ICP becomes, which is going to make your job so much easier. I promise it really, really will. So, <laughs> okay. So now that we are collecting our data and, you know, we've got it, what do we do with it? And this is really where your analytics come into play because it's all about using your data to make informed decisions. Like, for example, if you are noticing that um, most of your engaged website visitors are from a certain industry, then it might be time for you to double down on that marketing sector and really pay attention to those people. Um, or say you have a lot of customer feedback coming in about a particular feature that your customers are talking about that you offer. Um, this would be a really great opportunity now for you to use that information to create ads that are really targeted um, or put it on your homepage or talk about it on social media, right? Talk about things that are already connecting with people. And this is how you're going to use your analytics effectively, right? So track your engagement, track what content connects with your audience. Um, and this is a shameless plug here, but you can use the uh, Hey Orca and use Heyorka to do that. Um, so track your best performing posts and your content. And make it easy for you to see what's working for you. Um, customer feedback tools, like I said, write your surveys, talk to your clients, talk to your customers, understand what they're thinking, how they're feeling, and your sales data, right? Look at patterns in your sales. Which type of clients are the easiest to close? Who has the highest lifetime value? Um, and this isn't just collecting information. It's about turning that information into actions that then refine your marketing and your product development. So now we're going to move into um, one of my favorite topics, um, which is uh, your ICP and then moving into your buyer persona. So we talked about an ICP being your blueprint, right? So your buyer persona are really a detailed portrait of the individuals that live within that ICP blueprint. So while your ICP might say that we're aiming for small to mid-sized tech companies, a buyer persona is going to get really specific about those people. So for example, I have on the slide here, um, meet Techie Tim. He's a 30-year-old CTO who loves podcasts and needs help streamlining his team's workflow. 
right? So creating a persona involves giving them a name, figuring out their job, their role, their goals, their daily challenges, and then understanding what solutions they're looking for and how you can help them with that. And creating a detailed persona really involves painting a vivid picture of your ideal customer based on your ICP. So you want to have your ICP first and then you're going to move into your buyer persona um, because this fictional character that you're creating really embodies the characteristics, the needs, and the behaviors of the segment of your target audience that you want to target. So now you might be asking, okay, what do I include in a buyer persona? I've got the ICP down, but now this buyer persona is throwing me for a loop, but that's fine because I've also put together a list of things that you want to include for your buyer persona so that you can do it after your webinar or after this webinar, if you would like. So the first is basic demographics, right? Really simple things like how old are they? Um, what gender do they identify with? Where are they located? Um, what are their education, right? Maybe they have a bachelor's. Maybe you're targeting people with PhDs. Again, it's very specific for your business and, and what you're trying to achieve with your targeting. Um, and their income as well. So maybe they make 75000 annually. The next thing you're going to want to look at is the job and career that your buyer persona has, right? So what industry do they come from? Are they working in tech? Are they working in education? Um, what company size are they coming from? It's small startups or are they coming from a more established company like 100 plus employees? Um, the position they have, you want to know um, or figure out the years of experience, right? Are you going after senior level executives? Are you going after maybe interns, right? Who are you trying to tar target with your marketing? Uh, your Their skills. So maybe they're really strong in organizational skills, right? Again, it depends on who you're targeting and your buyer personas. Next thing is goals and challenges. So I think this is important to note it to mention as well, because when we're marketing and when we're in the trenches of marketing, I think it's really easy to think of people you're marketing to as just numbers or just a way to hit your targets or make profit, make revenue. Right. Um, but when we're marketing, we're marketing to real people with challenges and fears and um you know, joys and hobbies. And these buyer personas really help you illuminate that so you can make marketing that feels human and that feels like you're going to connect with people, right? So you want to have, um, you know, what are their professional goals? Maybe it's to streamline projects. What are their personal goals? Maybe it's you want to uh, or they want to achieve a better work-life balance, right? So how can your product or service help them with that? Um, and of course, their challenges, right? You know, what are they struggling with and how can your product or service really connect with them on that? Um then yeah, their values and fears, so same kind of thing, right? Maybe they really value efficiency. Maybe they fear falling behind in work. So your product or service can help with that. And we can't talk um, on a Hey Worker webinar without talking about media consumption. So where are your buyer personas hanging out online, right? Are they active on LinkedIn? Are they active on TikTok? Make sure you're paying attention to where they're spending their time. Um, also news sources, where are they getting their information and their hobbies, right? Like I said, Techie Tim, he loves podcasts. So maybe if your buyer persona also loves podcasts, maybe it would be great to make a podcast because clearly that's where your audience is going to enjoy spending their time. Um, and last but not least is buying motivation and process. So you have your ICP, which is your blueprint. You have your buyer persona, which is your detailed portrait. And then you have even more detailed, which is um, buyer types. And there's four different kinds, but we don't have time to talk about that today because we would be here forever. So maybe that's another topic for another webinar sometime. Um, but just so you know, you do want to pay attention to how these buyer personas make purchasing decisions. Um, so for example, maybe this buyer persona really values a free trial. Um, so that's something you can implement. Or maybe they spend a lot of time researching before they feel comfortable buying a product or signing a contract. So make sure your website caters to that research-centered buyer persona, right? So this will really help you tailor your marketing efforts, um, create targeted ads, right? Develop really relevant content like blogs and case studies and webinars and design product features that address specific needs that these people are facing. And it seems overwhelming, but it's such an illuminating way to do marketing because then you don't feel like you're guessing or assuming, you know, you're able to make marketing material that directly hits on those points. 
I love the idea of making that like fake person out of your buyer persona. Like when you make things like, say you just make a blog, you can think to yourself, would techie Tim read this blog and like it, um, share it with their friends. So I love having that kind of fake person that you can, you know, relate things back to. No, 100% agreed. Like, I think it's so interesting because I feel like the, this, persona thing can be used in so many different ways not just you know you know for your ideal client profile to get clients and stuff but even to create product or create content or like do all of those other things so um, it's such a valuable skill to know how to do this for sure 100% and it can be really fun too I personally love making them you know you find your little pictures and you create all these different personas and then when you're making marketing you're like oh man yeah techie Tim would really love this TikTok or you know I don't know techie Tina would really love this blog right so it it allows you to be a little bit more fun and personal with what you're marketing and how you're marketing um And just I want to reiterate as well, we kind of touched on this earlier, but having your um, buyer personas and your ICPs updated and relevant and making sure that you're paying attention if your clients shift or if your um, customers are experiencing something that maybe makes them act a little bit different, making sure we're taking the time to revisit your buyer personas and ICPs, making sure those documents are updated. So that is very important to do. Uh, Now I want to talk to you about putting your ICP to work. So let's talk about making all of this information work for you, right? This isn't just a fun exercise um, that you do when you're in marketing. It's really about making every piece of your marketing um, more effective, right? So the way that we do that is by tailoring our messages. Um, So talking directly to the needs and the dreams of your ICP um, in your marketing materials. Then the next one is choosing your channels, making sure that if your clients and customers are on LinkedIn, you are on LinkedIn. You are connecting with them on the regular on those platforms that they're spending their time. Um, Also, like we said, creating products that they love, right? So use your ICP to guide the product development to help you come up with services that you can offer that really help your client. Because when you are able to offer something that helps them, that genuinely helps them, you will then be successful in return because you're offering something that people want and they value and they need. And that's a really awesome thing, especially as a freelancer, that you have the control to do that. You can offer something that is life changing. Um, and I really mean that. So, you know, this is a way to to do that and do it effectively. Um, yeah. So we're getting to the recap now. I know this is a lot of information, but hopefully everyone is still with me here. <laughs> Um, So I just want to wrap up by revisiting some of the essentials of what we discussed today, right? So this will really help um, solidify our journey when building an ideal client profile and the value that it brings to your marketing and your marketing strategies moving forward. So the first recap point is your ICP is essential. If you don't have one, that's okay. Um, But really try and sit down, maybe carve out like an hour and try and create one for yourself because it really will help you moving forward. Um, Like we said, it's, it's the blueprint for your essential dream clients. And these are the people who will benefit most from what you're offering. Um, The second point is finding your focus, right? So use your ICP to make marketing targeted, to make it really personal and connect with your dream clients and make it efficient, right? Save yourself some time, save yourself some money um, and be able to do this in in a more cost-effective and time-efficient way. Next is data is your friend or data is your friend, depending on how you say it, Um, but gather insights from your customer interactions, from your sales feedback, right? Do some social listening to refine your ICP. Don't be afraid to dig into um, your analytics because that is where your answers are. If you've been struggling, um, pay attention to what's connecting with your audience online um, because that will help you move forward with clarity. And don't forget the buyer personas, right? Once you have your ICP, work on really digging into a detailed portrait because, again, that will just help you um, refine who you're targeting. And last but not least, stay agile with your analytics. So use the analytics to update your ICP um, and personas and ensure that they remain relevant and effective as you move forward in your business. 
So thank you so much for listening. I really hope this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions, um, let me know. I haven't been looking at the chat. So, um, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll grab some things out that people have been talking about in the chat here, but thank you so much. I feel like I just learned so much in such a short period of time. It was amazing. Um, but I'll go through some comments we have here in the chat. Um, Alex says, I recently did this for a client and it took a while to niche down to a specific persona. I find it so hard to do it for myself. Do I just start by reviewing my past clients? I think that I think that's a great comment, actually, because it's so much easier to do things for clients sometimes than to do it for your own business. And I think that's something a lot of people relate to. Um, but yes, I would recommend looking at the people who you've already worked with or who are um, already in your ecosystem with your business and really pay attention. And like I said in, in the slides, like write down some similarities that you see between these people, because um, it, it doesn't have to be a strict thing where you write it down and you can't erase it, right? So even if you notice that maybe all of your clients have blue hair, right? It could be something as simple as that. You know, write that down. Um, but yeah, start with the people who are interacting with you and that will help guide your efforts um, to attract more people like that because you've already been successful with those group of people. Awesome, thank you. And then we had another comment um, from Scott. So um, a business may need more than one buyer persona. Different products or services you offer may appeal to different market segments, segments or audiences. So you can have different personas and then you tailor your marketing to be directed to each on their preferred channels. Very good point, yes, because there could definitely be um, you know, a situation where your business may have a bunch of different areas. So you may need to have more than one persona. A hundred percent. This like reminds me of like, um, and this is like random, but if you're into marketing, which I'm assuming everyone here is, <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys recently saw the Gymshark, the new collection that they released specifically uh, to protect like black woman's hair and how they kind of centered their marketing around it. I feel like that's a very good example of like a very distinct group that they're trying to target versus like everyone basically who can just wear gym clothes. I think that was really interesting. So I definitely see those di different kind of buyer personas or brands trying to target different demographics, which is really cool. 100%. No, I, I think um, that's a great point, Ketsia, because yeah, you're definitely going to have more than one buyer persona. Um, some businesses have three, four, five, right? Um, but then you're able to create campaigns like Gymshark did that is very directed at a certain group of people. And then it's going to really connect with them, um, mm -hmm. which makes it really powerful, but also means that the business is paying attention to who is interacting with them. Um, and you want to support them because they see you and you feel seen and heard if you are that type of buyer persona, right? Exactly. So I think, I think, I mean, for me, I feel like I'm going to buy from them <laughs> now. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you're spot on. Um, and I think we do have an extra question um, as well from Andrew, which is really cool. Um, if I offer content production services to IT consultants, independent schools, and even restaurant, who would be my ideal ICP? Um, I feel like that's a lot of different people from different niches. Um, I think that people have different opinions when it comes to like niching down or catering to everybody, but I would like to know your opinion, Emma. Yeah. So I agree. I think that's a lot of different, um, like industry sectors that you have going on there, which is fine, right? There's different opinions on if you should niche down or if you shouldn't. Um, but if you don't want to, that's okay. Um, but I would recommend really looking at the people that you want to work with, right? So I did mention that it is about looking at the industry and, you know, where they're located in the world and everything like that. But it can also be about, um, the type of people that you're working with. Right. So maybe you have restaurants and IT, but you're going after the people at a senior level of management who are making those decisions. Um, so if that was the case, right, you want to connect with people um, who are making those buying decisions so they can sign those contracts and get you those, um, you know, close those deals with you, then you would want to make sure that your content or your marketing is directed at those types of people. Um, so yeah, it doesn't necessarily always have to be just the industry. It can be the type of people that you would want to um, have those conversations with so that you can move your business forward. 
Awesome. Thank you. And I think we have one more question here from Ashley. Um, can you talk about a time that you've had to pivot on an ICP? Was it due to a change in industry trends or data that maybe showed up um, for the original ICP, but wasn't the right fit? Yeah, that's a great question. So I actually had this experience when I was working in-house for a brand. Um, when I joined the team, they were targeting a very different type of ICP. They were a little bit more, um, I think, boho, like free spirited, kind of like free people vibes. Um, and then the CEO of the company decided that they wanted to really pivot and move away from that and move more into a streamlined, more um, classic minimalist kind of look and that really affected everything that we had done up to the point in the company and it was a huge overhaul of the marketing because we were no longer targeting um, this type of person and that really you have to start from zero I think when you you realize you have to pivot away from a certain type of ICP to a different type altogether it does require a lot of work um, and you have to go through the steps all over again, right? So figure out where are they based? Um, you know, what are their hobbies? Where are they hanging out? What do they like to do on the weekends? Um, and it definitely is a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it proves that you can pivot if you do it successfully and if you do it by um, paying attention to your analytics and your data. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow, that's a very different change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds like crazy. Sounds like those 3 a.m. midlife crises you get. Like, I'm going to change my entire life. <laughs> Suddenly, you're no more boho. You're just a minimalist. So. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely whiplash for the marketing department, for sure. But we got through it, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I think that was everything I saw in the chat there. Um, before we hop off, though, I do want to announce our winners for our giveaway so our Instagram poll winner is Sierra Levine. So congratulations, Sierra. And our Hayorka customer winner is Kristen Bussard. So congratulations, Sierra and Kristen. I will be contacting you after this webinar and we'll be getting you your merch store points. And thank you so much, Emma. This was amazing. I feel like I learned so much and I feel like I can feel another webinar coming on soon on this topic, which is, which would be great. Yeah. <laughs> we learned so much, but thank you. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the day and a long weekend. If you have a long weekend where you are, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much for having me on guys. This was so much fun and yeah, I hope it was educational and everyone enjoyed. So thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you so you. much. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye.